Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about C++ compilers. So these are pretty much necessary when you're learning C++. These take your source code and turn it into a working program, we hope. This is a bit of a problematic area if you're learning C++. There isn't any st standard C++ development environment. With Java you can download the official compilers from Oracle, which used to be Sun. But uh, there's nothing like that in C++. So there's plenty of competition anyway. There are at least 12 different C++ compilers. I looked these, them up for, before making this video. I could only think of about three or four, but uh, there are actually 12 at least, most of which I didn't recognize, or well, I did recognize vaguely, but uh, not ones that I'd have thought of. And there's also lots and lots of uh, IDEs, integrated development environments, and also you can use text editors which have C++ editing modes, so there's a huge range of uh, combinations. So obviously I'm not going to be able to look at all of them in this video. I'll just give you a couple of suggestions for each operating environment. And the other thing is we don't really have time to go in and show you how to download all these and install them. There are lots of tutorials online, both written ones in blog posts and articles, and also videos on YouTube. So have a look around and uh, you should be able to find something that shows you how to do what you want to do. So let's start off with Windows. Visual C++ is Microsoft's own offering. If you're using this, try to get 2015 or later the version of Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is the environment and Visual C++ is the compiler. If you have 2015, that has full support for C++ 11 and 14 and quite a lot of C++ 17 as well. I think they've actually just about managed full C++ 17 compliance. compliance. So well done to them because they were rather bad at this in the previous years, but they seem to have got their act together now. 2013, if you have to use that, that'll support C++ 11, but not C++ 14. I think there's just one small area of this fundamentals course that uses C++ 14, and it's not critical. So you can get by with this if you have to use it, but try and get the latest version if, if you can. So you can download and install this from Microsoft. There is a free version which is limited. I think they've now uh, limited it to the point you can only use it for 30 days and then you have to upgrade or something like that. Or at least that was the impression I got the last time I used it. It may have changed since then or I may have uh, missed something. But uh, anyway, that's the situation as I understand it. So the other way to... I mean, there are other commercial products for Windows as well. The main alternative is to get a open source free compiler, which is designed for a Unix environment, and then get a uh, supporting environment, which you can use to run this compiler in that environment, so it feels at home. So MinGW is the main one. There's also something called Cygnus, C-Y-G-N-U-S, not sickness, Cygnus, as in, like a, a baby swan. So MinGW will give you the GNU C++ compiler, which is a very good compiler. And this will run in a command line environment. So you get a little command shell and you can type commands into that. You can download this and install this free of charge. There's a website for MinGW, which has all the instructions on it. If you follow those carefully, you shouldn't have too many problems, I hope. One point you do need to note is to, that you have to set some environment variables after you install it. I think it's the home and the path variables. You need to do that so the command line environment can find the compiler. If you don't do that, it won't work. But that shouldn't be a problem if you follow the instructions. And that's just the compiler on its own, so you need to have some means of creating source code files. So you need to install some sort of editor. I use Notepad++, which is an open a free open source program. Sorry, not open source, don't think, but it is freely available. It's not the same as the Notepad program that comes with Windows and is uh, not very nice to use. This is actually a, much, a lot better, and it does have lots of modes for editing, which includes C++ source code. But you can use any other editor that you like. You just have to save your files in the directory where MinGW will where the compiler runs from within mean GW. And that's why you need to set the environment variables to tell you, tell the compiler where the files are. 
Mac OS X. Apple provides the Xcode IDE and compiler, so that's a pretty sophisticated IDE. It supports quite a lot of other languages as well, so if you decide to go off and do Swift or Objective-C or Android, you can use Xcode for that as well. You can download this free of charge from the App Store. There is something about payment, but it's, uh, you don't actually have to pay for it. And there is also an option to install the command line tools. So if you're using other IDEs or you want to use your own editor, then you need to have the command line tools available so that your own environment can pick up the compiler. Visual Code Studio is just the IDE part of Microsoft Visual Studio without the C++ compiler. You can download that free of charge and use it on a wide range of operating systems. So you can use that and then pick up the compiler that comes with Xcode if you like. Or if you want to uh, be a bit more independent, you can use the Homebrew package manager and install the GCC compiler, or the GNU C compiler. Or you can in fact install the CLang compiler, which is another very good free open source compiler. So if you use Homebrew, you'll need to provide your own editor. I think Brackets is quite a popular one for editing source code on the Mac. Linux, BSD and other variations of Unix. Usually these come with a C compiler, which you need because you have to compile the software for the operating system. It may well be that this C compiler will also compile C++. So if that's the case and you're happy with that compiler, you can just use it. If not, if it's your own computer that you've got Linux or BSD on, or you happen to be someone who has the rights to install software, you can use the package manager to install either GNU CC or CLang, or you can download the source code and compile it from source. If you don't have admin privileges, if you're using a computer at work or at college, for example, you'll have to ask the system administrator if they would mind doing that for you. And they might say no, but uh, try and be nice, so <laughs> maybe they'll say yes. There are various IDEs which are available to run on uh, under the X, which is the GUI system for Linux, BSD and Unix. So in the graphical environment, there are various IDEs you can run within that. Most programs, in fact, use Emacs or VI or VI. VI is a sort of very old and rather clunky looking program now, but there is a new version called Vim, which does all sorts of fancy things like having different colours of text for source code uh, highlighting and you can also look at more than one file at the same time. And the other main alternative is Emacs, which is a very large and complex and programmable editing unit. You'll either love it or hate it. In fact, whether to use Emacs or Vi is the subject of lots of religious wars. So if you have a lot of time to waste, you can go online and uh, tell people why they're using the wrong editor. Uh, but personally, I think it's much more sensible to learn C++ and uh, do something useful with your time on this planet. OK, so uh, once you've got your compiler installed, how do you use it? Well, if you're using a typical IDE, you'll create a project. Then you create some files and add them to the project. You write the source code, save it. When you're creating the project, make sure it's a C++ project, of course. And uh, it might be an idea to make sure that it's a console or a command line project and not some sort of GUI that uh, adds all sorts of strange things to your code. Then click the project menu and then build. And then it'll uh, chug away in front of you and uh, hopefully you'll get a runnable execute without any errors. If you're using a command line program, you create files in your editor or the environment that you're using. Write the source code in your files and then save it. Then you type the command to start the compiler. So usually that'll be either C++ or G++. Usually C++ for CLang or G++ for GNU. And then after that, you put the names of the source code files. And then you press the return key. Running the program. If you're in an IDE, you click on the project menu and then click Run. If you're at the command line, you type in the name of the program and then the return key. So uh, how do you find out what the name of the program is? 
Well, if you don't tell the compiler, the program name will probably be a.out or possibly a.exe on MinGW. The reasons for that are rather historical. It's basically short for assembly.output. Anyway, if you want a more useful name, you can change this. If you give the minus O option to the compiler when you compile it, so you put C++, then you put minus O, then you put the name you want for your program, and then you put the source code files after that. So this will compile test1.ccc and generate a program binary called test1. Okay, and that's it for this video. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.